Welcome to the headphone wall. I guess it's a combination headphone wall, speaker wall video. Um, probably a little less detail than it has been in the previous years when I've done this. If you don't know, there are links in the description. Haha, <laughs> future ZS. The previous headphone wall on my old review desk used to have, I think, 13. Used to have 13 headphones, and I would go over each one of them and why it was there. So now that I've um, giant basement did it in 2020, I figure the 2021 wall should be a representation of every flavor. The I will say this because I forgot it last time. There is the stacks are upstairs because I don't feel comfortable leaving electrostatics in the basement with dust and insulation and ceiling. I don't, you know, I've got filters running. But that's one thing you should note that if you have electrostats, you probably want to have them like protected, like in a box, not away from the thing. So where do we start with this? I'm, uh, I'm a little like miffed on that. Uh, Bucart uh, S400s there. My old Emotivas, which I really don't like. Like they, they don't sound good to me anymore, but they're my first speaker. So they'll always be here. You know, let's run, let's run through, the, let's run through the, uh, the speakers first before we get to the headphones. Swan M3As. I paid $1,200 for them. They sounded $1,200. They're fantastic. They only sound good when you set them up properly, um, which was the last time I did that was when I reviewed them because then I had them in my bedroom in the old apartment and they were just sort of like together on a table and I was like, ah, but that's a waste. Um, possibly beaten by the D1090s, which are over there. There are some speakers and things that are like, like my heresies. Like if I walked around the whole house, I could show you all the speakers and what I love. But for now, those. I guess we should also mention the little Swan M50Ws, which is the 2.1. This used to be my dedicated computer setup with a little sub. And it's here now because why not? Cute. My original set of uh, JBL Studio 530s. Do I need to announce them again? They were literally the best speaker ever. They're probably still one of the best near field speakers I've ever heard, even though they look funkin funky. I love you, babies. I love you. Um. Yamo C103s in walnut, just a big barrel of a speaker. I mean, I, you can just none of these speaker descriptions have changed. You'll look at the speaker review and you'll know that. So I'm gonna point at what's here. So M3A Studio 530 C103. We've got M300 Swan, which is a slightly smaller version of that. And uh, oh, by the way, we're mirrored over here so we can go out. Um, one of my friends had a problem with that. I don't understand what it was. But uh, M300 Swan. Bucart S300. This is one of the first big Bucarts I got. Six and a half. Super deep. God, I love that speaker. The big old Emotiva Air Mode of six. Nah, I wish Emotiva would make... I, I mentioned this previously that they, this has the larger tweeter. This is three times more area than what Emotiva currently has in their like, home theater speakers. And I'd love to see that come back. We've got the Triangle LRs. These are a new addition. I reviewed them in this house. And uh, yes, they fucking, they belong here. Um, fluid FPV, uh, I don't know. It sounds like a transmitted disease. But these are the, fl I'll get the link. Link below, everything's linked below, by the way. These are the fluid coaxials with an AMT. And I thought that was super fucking unique. And they're, they're deathly goddamn like neutral. Ugh. Like they're great, but they're like, ugh. Um, Bucard S 200s. These are super rare. They stopped selling these like immediately. And I'm waiting for the new version, which will probably be, I guess, a powered monitor now. Now that we're looking at the A500s. But we'll see if they come out with that. These little Yamos. I do not remember the model number. I'm going to pull one out. Oh, God. I just hit these in the review. The C601, which are, they look like this is upside down, right? Look, tweeters in the butt, but nope. Yamos written that way. Real phase plug. I need to figure out a place to use these. Not temporarily, like, I just love them. They were, they were, they're my introduction to Yamaha other than what my par parents had. Um, moving up for a split second. Canto Tux. Yeah. Uh, do I need anything else? No, nothing else needs to be here. In fact, the Vanatu T1 Encores, I'm selling to my friend because he's known Vanatu and he's like, I really miss them. And I'm like, you know what? I, I don't have a space for them. I don't have a space for my wall. Here's my, I'm selling my T1 Encores. Hopefully Vanity comes out with something new this year and I can get, get something back on this wall from them. My original set of RB42s because you fucking better, you better have RB42s on the wall. And the iLoud um, micro monitors, which I was re recently using. Like there's my speakers upstairs on my computer. And I'm like, you know what? 
Yeah, so now the iLoud MTMs are upstairs, which is the bigger version. So I'll link to the bigger versions also in the description. So that's the middle shelf and the top shelf for speakers. The floor has the Super Daytons, which if you, you have to be a real old school Zeos fan to know what the Super Daytons are. Because that was like before I had any money, those were like $30 a, a pair. And I managed to get like five pairs and then I stuck three of them together and I took the tweeters out and I blocked the holes and I put the three tweeters in a cluster and I had it set up. And I ran it off my father's Pioneer VSX D1S in that little room in the Bronx. And that was like my holy fuck, speakers are amazing. And they've never not been amazing. We've got a very also rare set of um, Kanto Yumi's uh, unpowered. I have the blue ones, a pair of the blue ones. These are a set of Design Acoustics PS10s, which are a fucking mess. There's glue all over them and the front foam is tearing, but these are new drivers my friend put in. And he's like, here, I don't like these speakers anymore. They have a down firing 10 inch and then a forward firing five and a quarter and then that little tweeter in there mirrored. Adam T5Vs are pretty much the standard like, hey, uni powered monitors, how much? 400 Adam T5Vs, there they go, that's them. I sold the T7Vs, did I sell the T8Vs? I might have T8Vs over there. I have T8Vs, I have not I have not brought it to myself to sell them because I have a feeling someone's gonna need one of those in the future. One of my neighbors is gonna be like, yeah, I wanna watch a big game on my, my TV. And I go there and there's a sound bar and I'm gonna be like, hold. I'm gonna run back here. I'm gonna grab the T8Vs and a DAC with a fiber optic and I'm gonna run back and be like, hold. I'm gonna plop that shit down in his living room and I'm gonna be like, there. Um, Swan M200s, my original love affair with Swan started with those. And actually, I didn't realize this, but they're sitting next to the Swan DIY 3.1, uh, which is a six and a, which that speaker is basically that speaker, but DIY, and therefore you, you have to power it, and that has self-powering and DSP correction, and this one required a crossover. So that was a superior speaker. Plus, Swan finished it a hell of a lot better than I did. Um, followed by the Kef Q100, which I frankly think is probably the most handsome speaker of the whole wall. The whole wall. You got the whole wall. It talks fantastic. Looks like a render. Very plain with the. But oh, fuck you. That that was the best looking. Still the best looking speaker. I can't ever bring myself to sell it. And the center Yamo S eight hundred three is because they will never go anywhere. They're they're they are the cheapest speaker. You can get them for like one hundred and eighty bucks for a pair or. If you spend 220 bucks, you get them like a 5.1 with like the smaller ones that aren't that good. And I even tested the towers, and the towers were like acceptable. But there's something about those 803s, they're, they're the best speaker Yamo currently has that isn't like in the crazy concert section, which I, I sold the, um, the concert twos to Pasta. So she's got those white ones up there. Uh, other speakers that I have in the house that I could just think of, I mean, obviously got the Heresies over here. I have my, let's take a walk. This is the S, what the hell are you gonna do? Uh, these used to be part of the headphone wall. These were an actual rack of it. I had the big Motivas, and then I had a shelf and then I had these Klipsch RP150M as a section. And I love these as near field. And currently they're being used as side channels in my basement home theater. Oh, the uh, JBL LSR 305s. Not the 305Ps, these are the old, 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 and old school ones. Bucart A500s over there. I love you, babies! Uh, uh, Studio 590s. I've got the little uh, Swan M1. There's, there's a Swan 1090s and 1010s. I think that's it for speakers in the basement. Moving on, let's do headphones. By the way, this video is going to take three hours to get all the links together. So please, if you appreciate hard work, go down there. Let's do the top row first. Um, I hope the camera's pointing correctly. Last time I did this, I had motion stabilization on. I'm not doing it this time because I thought it looked weird. Uh, some of these headphones have never appeared on the wall before, mostly because I didn't have enough room and therefore they got pushed to the side and everything was sort of like, all right, like I own you and I have you in a box, but I'm not gonna display you. But now they're gonna get displayed because some of these are like milestone headphones. These Pioneer SEA 1000s are just the worst build. They're ugly as sin. I have replacement pads on them and I actually did, this is one of the first headphones I did a detachable wire mount because I had like a 20 foot wire that came with it. And I tried them recently 
and they still sound good. Pioneer in Japan makes like some of the most high-end headphones imaginable. They don't come to America, and no one talks about them, but the SCA 1000s did. They weren't that expensive. They were cheap. They're, they're still cheap. They're the weirdest fucking thing. I almost feel like retro reviewing them because... But I need a new one. I need the SEA 2000s uh, Pioneer. Get on that shit. My original set of ship 9500s. I don't think these need any explanation. If you don't have a set, you should just go grab a set now. The end. Moving on. These are the Monoprice Monolith 560 Planars. And I've had to change the pads of them because the pads are uncomfortable. And I had to fix the clamp on them. But the build on this box... and, and they had that weird plug thing where you can plug either one in and it doesn't matter. So I had to build custom cables to try to balance it. <sighs> They're so smooth. These are like the original smooth jazz planar. Oh, my, my heater turned off. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh. Micah MB42 is here. Before I move on, MB42s. MTM's upstairs. My own Walsh's are in my bedroom. I've got those RF7s in the in the the great room it's called the great room i didn't call it that it's a great room but it's also called the great room there's nothing in the guest bedroom i try to put speakers in the guest bedroom for when guests come over it feels like a waste to not do that t50rps now here's a, here's a secret ready mad dogs t60rps oh, where are you? i know you're back here t20rps all of these have ended up on the wall or not on the wall and i just they're all i love them all i love you all but I can't display you all, so you're all just sort of like hanging out back here. Like the T60RPs with that beautiful headband. I uh, just, we, we're gonna get to, like we have so much more to get to. And I just, I, I literally ran out of wall and oh, the Fidelio X1s are back here because I have, we'll get to it. But yeah, so the T50s have taken the replacement of the T20s. It's literally a timeshare thing. Both of them are fantastic. Both of them have changed my life as far as headphones and what people can expect. We're not up to the Argons yet. I think I have both sorts of arg. Oh, I don't know. I have. I don't know the wall yet. We're actually going over this like by my with me as well. Tiger three hundred Rs. Yes. Bear dynamic proving that you could write gaming on something as that'll be fucking amazing. Are my other ones here? Yes, they are. So Tiger three hundred Rs open back gaming headphone. Uh, I don't think I changed the pads on this. I did a whole bar dynamic pad swap, and I think I left the stocks on these. There's the X2HR, Phillips. We have the X1s back there. X2HR here. We're going to get here to the X3s. So that's just, they're all over here. This set doesn't belong here. These are the Shure 1540s. And as you can see, there's a wire plugged into it, and it's actually a DD Hi-Fi. Yeah, you're a DD Hi-Fi uh, MMCX balance 4.4 pentacon cable and the only reason these are here is because i bought them to modify them because they suck this is a suck headphone this is going to be a less suck headphone i'm going to if i'm going to mod a headphone i'm going to modify a headphone that no one's modifying because it's too expensive that's 500 fucking dollars i paid 400 on sale but i'm going to cut you the fuck open and make you better i'm going to make you better because i love the build i love the build i think my thing's going the blonde, the blonde B20s. These are a Civica, uh, a Sendi Iva clone. These are a little bit softer, a little bit wider, a little bit more plain. Um, we have to talk about the other Sendi Iva clone, which is not currently on the wall because I had it upstairs, which is the Acoustic Research um, ARH1 for Acoustic Research Headphone 1 because I don't think they made any other headphones. So I don't, where the fuck is my Sendi Iva? Is it in a box? My Sandy Ivas might be in a box. I didn't sell them, but I have, they should be represented here. Maybe I'll get them. I'll find them. I'll find you, and I'll put them on the wall or I'll put them on a, on a thing. Because it's basically Sandy Ivas came first, then there was like a monoprice one, and then there was these blonde ones, and then there was... Fuck, there was another one in the middle, and this one was like, oh shit, is this the same one? When you pulled off the pads, it was the exact same driver. So the Acoustic Research is what I think is the final, the best revision, at least my pair. I've heard people say they don't sound very good, so it must be just every pair is different. But yeah, the, the shape and build of the Acoustic Research ones, fantastic. Grumpy Gears headphone stand, by the way. Um, and then we've got this, which is the big ZMF Tour which is just a, a big wooden, these are, uh, what's it called? Uh, the dynamic, I think they're 50 mil, and 
gorgeous. Like they look like an old church and they sound like an old church. Like if you listen to church organ, if that's what you're, if you just want to listen to the interstellar soundtrack over and over and over again by the auteurs, new addition to the wall would absolutely be on the wall. This is the hi-fi min, uh, five XX from drop. And it's super light and super open and it's like mildly aggressive, but in the best way possible. I don't think anyone's given a poor review to the 5XXs, and I didn't expect it to even be good. hi Min is like really, they you can give and take them. Like, we're going to get to the Sundars and stuff, but it's all that's in the center column. But it's like, oh man, I don't believe it. There's the uh, mini DSP Hears, which is the little microphone for measuring things. I haven't done a review of that yet. DT880 600 ohm. Not the other ones, not the pros, not the, not the 600 ohm. You power these with the sun, and then God comes out and speaks to you. And they're up on the wall, and they're going to eventually be, be balanced. Oh, I should advertise now that there will be a live stream on YouTube, probably, where I line up one of these tables, or probably more like four of these tables, and I used to do all the headphone mods I wanted to do in a row, which has slowly increased in numbers now. So this will get a headphone balance mod on that live stream. So if you want to go there and throw money at me, that's fantastic. Um... An unrecognizable pair of headphones. These are the Monolith M1060Cs, which are the, the ma mass, not mass drop, monoprice. And they were a closed back planer, but now they're an open back planer because of this uh, cover that I got. I forget what the, what the company was. And they've also got the vegan pads on there, which I spent $100 on. They're so fucking nice. Those are the uh, Odyssey vegan pads. And if I just change the headband out, then there'd be nothing recognizable about this but the driver. And I'm not sure if I, I did too much to it to just sell it off. Like it has my name written on it. It says Zeo Spintera. But it's like, I don't pull these out nearly enough. And for what they are, which is a cacophony of bullshit, they're still really fucking impressive to listen to. I feel like I would loan these to someone for a while and just let them let them dick around with them. I always want to have ownership, but I don't need them right now. Dirty, Bear Dynamic MMX 300s. We were talking about gaming headsets with these. Oh my God, cheap, good gaming headset. Well, this is a very expensive gaming headset. This is like 300 bucks for the MMX 300 for a closed back with a microphone attached. And I'm like, oh fuck. Custom wire with like five poles. But oh my God, you put the right pads. You didn't even need the right pads. They were impressive without the pads. Then I swapped it out for Dakoni pads. And now there are probably one of the better closed back. Like if you say I have under $400 and you don't want to wait for the... Um, the Argons, you get MMX 300s. Take this, take this mic, just flip it up. You don't need the mic, flip it up. Want to change the wire? There's someone who has made a custom wire for it. It does exist. These are fantastic. Fucking fantastic. Um, here's one that was on the wall, then disappeared for a long time, and I think belongs here. Because AKG needs a little bit of representation. There's too many anime girls that have AKG headphones on in, in Japan. Uh, K712s. These are the Austrian maids ones. Maids ones? Are these Austrian? Wait. I mean, it might be Slovenia. Made in Slovenia. Which they now don't make them in Slovenia anymore. So this is actually a rare pair regardless. Uh, these were like a really just big, open, comfortable, super fucking comfortable set of headphones. With a little bit more bass response. Like the K7XX was sort of like based on that. And I, th I liked these more. And I don't know if it was a mental thing or if I, one pair was burned in more than the other. Brainwaves Alara. You want to talk about... Actually, are we talking about the Alara? These were the same as the Quad that I reviewed. The Quads were like 800 bucks in their recent review, like within the last two or three months. And these Alaras I have for like two years. And I don't know how that company... Like, they're, they're identical. You could just tell they're the fucking same. But these are like 8% less detailed. And for the price difference, I'll take the Alaras. Which are... This is all metal. This is a big, a big old brainwaves Alara. Uh, I pulled them out. Someone recently was like, "Hey, have you heard the Alaras recently?" Because I don't think about them. And I was, I put them on. I'm like, "Wow, these are, these are fucking nice." Um, ooh, we got to talk about Grados. Uh, Grados SR60E with GS1000 pads. Um, Grado GS1000s with GS1000 pads. And this is an experimental headphone sent to me by Ryan at Modhouse, who does the Argons, and he's never asked for it back. And it's fucking fantastic. But I don't think he's planning on re reproducing this. I think it's too fiddly and you gotta get a Grado thing. And no one wants a Grado fucking, no one wants a Grado headband. Although he's actually repaired like the top. But Grado, Grado, Grado. This is the two Grados you can get 
until you get the GW100, which I'm going to link, because that's upstairs, because that's my every day, I, every day I stream for six hours, great old GS100s with GS1000 pads. Everything needs a giant GS1000 pad. And I got these for sort of prestige. I would love to make these uh, detachable wire. And I got these because when the ship 9500s disappeared off the internet, I needed a replacement. So I'm like, let's see if I could do anything to make these SR60s worthwhile. And change the pads out, bend the headband a certain way. It's an attached wire, which sucks, but they sound massively open and amazing. Definitely, these are the only two like Grados in the, the, from the thing that I respect. is like the top of the line, the bottom of the line. Everything in the middle is like a crapshoot. We talked about those. The Yamaha MT5s. These... These uh, were one of the only headphones that I thought would usurp the M40Xs because they are a similar price, similar design. I changed the pads, obviously, to something massive. I forget what's even on there at this point. You have to go back and watch the review. But they were just like a big base closed back for cheap. And that's pretty much the consistency for the next three headphones. And I don't know how I organize them like this. I just sort of like crap shot them in my head. But so we've got the MT5s. I did the MT7s, by the way. They were no good. They were beautiful, but they were not good. Um, these are the Monoprice Retros, which I also did a detachable cable mount balance mod on them and put giant XL pads on. And these are the cheapest headphones. No, no, no. We're getting to the KPH30Is. These are the cheapest headphones other than that. 30 bucks, like a $35 set of pads, change the wire if, you, if it really annoys you because it was attached. These are just like, oh, if you ever wanted to know what Soundstage is like and how what, what enjoyable low end is like, there you go. Before that though, before this came about, the Superlux HD669 with the awesome detachable cable extension thing. Also on massive fucking pads that, I don't, that look expensive. These feel like, these might be real leather. I don't know what I did to these. My God, I've got pads on top of things. Same as that. These were years ago, and this was much more recent. This was in the last two. This is like four years ago. And I, I've, I've always had them. I've had them forever. I just spend it in a box because I'm like, oh, well, they don't sell these anymore. I will attempt to link the 669s. But you got this, you got this, or you spend a little more money and you get this, and you got the same sort of like, holy fuck, I just want to listen to Dead Mouse for breakfast. There you go. Um, moving down, I guess we'll move down and over. Gold planar. These are the little tiny gold planar Russian uh, telecom headphones, what they look like. And they have a little detachable cable. And I did these and I did the GL600s. And they, made a, they had a lasting impression because I was like, I could recommend these. I think these are changed pads, actually. These are. These are Yaxi pads for... Sennheiser HD25s, so I actually changed the pads, but like they didn't, they don't fold it anyway, and you had to put the things on it because of the way they, they're weird. But let me tell you about gold planar for a second. When I did this in the 600s, I sold the 600s, I kept these, and I said, gold planar, they do the best tuning I've ever heard on planar, because these are little planar magnetics, by the way. And behind me are a headphone that I have not yet reviewed. These are the GL2000s which are like 600 bucks. This is the double magnet ones. And you could bet your fucking sweet ass these will be on this wall somewhere. I will build a new wall. I will just drill a hole because these GL2000s are absolutely insane. And I want to make sure you know about that before the review comes out. They're on Linsole. See, I'll link to Linsole to the GL2000s. There's also GL850s, which are more money than the GL2000s by a lot. And I don't know why the number goes down, it's one of those things. Um, these are in size order on doubled up eight by two by 10 inch phone blocks because I ran out of phone blocks because I have a lot of headphones now. So there's eight phone blocks that are like this. And we've got, I'm gonna do it real fast and we'll go back. M60X, B&O H6, AKG361, the one more Tridents or triple drivers, Taxstar Pro 82s, m and Bluetooth headphones, the Mackie MC450s, the ESS 422H hybrids. We've got the ATH M40X. We've got the HD660s, the HD600s, and the HD58X. What do you want to talk about? Uh, I think these are, like, these are like the portable. Like this would count as portability down here. I mean, I don't know about the Tac Stars. They need a special cable. Most comfortable headphone. I'll, all of you can go to fucking hell. 
most comfortable headphone. I don't have a Cooler Master MH751 here. I would possibly replace it with that, but this is like the old G, the OG. I, most uncomfortable headphone that I have on my wall and most comfortable headphone I have on my wall. It's very strange. Um, the one more triples have that little 10 millimeter uh, second driver, like a little tweeter in the front. And, oh God, you power those, right? These were better than the seven ones because they're more consistent. These are the prettiest fucking headphones as they've ever fucking been. They just, they just are. They just, they just bronzed hazel, everyone. M60X, I was taking on planes when we used to go on planes. Thick boys. Probably for on air is one of the most comfortable. Not sure. I would probably. I mean, this is an open back versus closed back, so I don't know if I'd fight that. The MOs are basically RBH HB2s, which were a headphone that I loved. And this is a Bluetooth version. I need to charge that. That reminds me, I should charge those up because they've probably been dead for a while. These are DT 1990s. If you can't afford DT 1990s, you get the MC 450s. I love these things. The ESS 422s using 1540 pads. Those have a dynamic and a uh, AMT in them, like a little baby planer thing, like, 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 like this above a driver. And they sound like shit with the stock pads, absolute garbage. You put some Dakota Nuggets on top, you change 1540 pads, you manipulate the fuck out of it. Oh my God, these are really nice. Closed back wooden with detachable cables. It's, it's really nice, like they're blowing my wall. M40Xs using ZMF cowhide, big, thick, stiff pad. Like a leather, like a like a jacket on a dead biker. Not even a living biker. Stiffer than that. Dead biker pads. Great. <coughs> Chewbacca. Stock pads. Getting on in age. Maybe a little bit senile. Come here, baby. All right, what are we looking at? We're looking at HD, HD 660S amazing for gaming really and like the upgrade from the oh god cat here how did you get cat here on me already oh jesus here go up on the chair go up on the chair you'll like that <clears throat> 660s was what i considered an upgrade from like the 600 and 58x jubilee it's expensive which is why the 58x jubilee was tuned like it similar like so 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 fucking similar it's like oh but i kept them both uh, by the way, this is the sticker from when we were at uh, RMAF. Remember RMAF when we can go do things? I couldn't, I couldn't sell them. Even though these are super close, I couldn't sell them. Because they have that, like, they have that little bit more going, just like almost an, an audible amount more. Go into your little thing. I had to give her a little place to sit. HG600s are a staple. They're the only headphones I've ever painted. As soon as I heard these, I knew that, oh, I'm never selling these ever. Just fucking do it. Just buy these. Spray paint your logo onto it. They are one of the headphones. Oh, you know what other headphones not here? Sennheiser 280 Pros. They're upstairs on Joe's tube amp. Go into your little bed. Or just climb behind the, the Atom T5Vs. I don't, it's fine. I'm sure that's fine. It's fine. This is your video, baby. You own it now. Um, yeah, this is one of those headphones, just like the 280 Pros, just like the Neumanns. Oh, can't not talk about the Neumann NDH20. I have two pair of these. One pair is here on this desk because I use it with my sound demos. I'm doing sound demos. I need it for the reference. The other pair is not on the wall. The other pair is up on my other desk where I do my sound editing because I need the reference. And also they're plugged into the Tor Roger tube amp because the 600s, the, the Neumann NDH20s, and the Sennheiser HG280 Pros are all fantastic headphones for listening to your source. They sound great, but then you plug them into another amp, they don't sound so great. You plug them into another amp and they, oh my God, they sound even better. And they sound even better and they sound worse and better. So if you're assessing a headphone amp, whether it's a tube or a solid state or a class A or balanced and unbalanced, 600, NDH20, 280 Pro. Those are the three. Those are the those are the big three, and the five X Jubilees are fantastic. They're like the, the the most affordable that you can get. You don't have to have a lot of power like these, and they don't cost as much as those. Fantastic. Now, the center boys here, Sundara Original Argon Mark Threes KPH 30i Ultras GS 1000 pads. You start to pick up a pattern here with the GS 1000 pads. I ordered four more sets of GS 1000 pads. I'm not here yet. 
Sundara are the planar equivalent to I don't give a fuck. Just, just give me sound around me. Boom. This was the first high feminine headphone that I actually like paid attention to. Because before this, it was all like, oh, 4XX and 4XXI and 4i, 4i, 500i, I, I didn't care. This was the Sundar. It was all by itself. And it's not a bassy headphone, but it's a natural sounding headphone. So it's just like, oh, I put it on like, oh, I'm just, I'm there. I'm in that place. And you could change, this one actually responds pretty well to different amplifiers too. More power, better. Mark III Argons, I could probably spend four hours just standing here talking about Argons in general and what Ryan at Modhouse does to them and how he undercharges and he should charge more because then there'll be less line and then you won't be waiting 14 weeks. Because these take these or the 20s or the 40s and they go, huh, why do you suck? And these don't suck. You could try these and love them. Put the pads, put the 1540 pads on that. I have 1540 pads here. I have 1540 pads here. I have 1540 pads on the 1540s, which makes sense. Do you have any other things that are modded to 1540 pads? No, um, but the Argons are the best modded headphone you can buy. That's it. We're going to get to the, I'm saying the Argons, T60 Argons over there. We're going to talk about those when I, whoop. but these were the benchmark. You gave them as much power as you could afford. You just put the biggest pads, whatever the pad of your choice was. I know there's different feels and slightly different changes, but oh God, just, oh, just, just what these do with big and openness, these do with big and openness, just close back and more bass. So it's like, yes. KPH30i Ultras. They're, sometimes these are $20 and sometimes these pads are $10 and that's a $35 piece of fuck you. Own those. Space Sloth. Own those. Because it's hilarious. That is, they are the center. I made damn fucking sure of all these headphones and speakers that, that the Z logo and those, because that represents this channel more than anything. Because holy shit, can you, there is a bargain out there if you cannot afford the rest. Of, oh, oh, Stellia's $3,000. Hmm. Or 100 pairs of these. A hundred, wait, no, 10? 30 times 10 would be 300. A hundred fucking fuck shit. Let's assume 25 because prices are not going up. But you could have 25 fuck fuck whole shit. Oh my god. That's that's insane. Yeah, KPH 30 eyes with the big pads. Amazing. Moving over. Hey, Focal Stelia. Um Zios, make sure you link to uh Fun All Audio who sent you this and never asked for it back. So I didn't spend three thousand dollars in the Stellias. They were sent to me by a company, and they were like, "I don't know, keep them." So funnel audio. Thank you very much. I do pull these out occasionally, and link to them because a the prestige because people are like, "Oh my god!" But b they are once you get used to how they sound because it isn't one of those like immediately like they don't sound three thousand dollars from the get go. You have to really let it get into your brain. And not in like a, oh, not in the um, expectation bias way, in the, wait, what is it doing? You don't know what it's doing. It's kind of like if you ever climbed in bed with like an alien and she's got tentacles and she's got three buttholes and you're like, oh my God, like you're a little bit panicked and you're confused. But after you get into it, it's like, wow, this is a special event. That's what these are. These are an alien with three tentacle buttholes because they just do finesse. Not loud, but finesse just um, remarkably. And you, you have to just play them at the right volume. There's a very specific volume range and you put them on, on anything that could put out quality detail and just, just let it absorb into your body. Let it happen. Just, just do, being with a slime girl is weird. Let it happen. These, these are the Ether C Flows 1.0. I never did the 1.1 upgrade. I've heard the 1.1 upgrade. I don't like the change it makes. I like the little bit of stank that these have on it. And I never would have said that previous, but now that I've heard the 1.1s, I know that the mod with the filter and the pad and the, the changes it to be more neutral. And I don't want that in every headphone. If I had old nothing but neutral headphones, it'd be a real fucking boring wall. So these are the 1.0s. However, I have taped Yaxi AKG pads to it because the pads on it were, were great, but the pads on the Ether CX, the ones that drop cells, were better. And I'm like, let me see what I could change it out. Unfortunately, it uses like a weird pad system. So I ended up 
taping a fucking AKG Yaxi pad, which is like, it, these are now like the most comfortable pads that have ever been in a headphone. And, and you just, yes. You just, yes. Big clothes back plane are yes. The TH909s, my God, they're beautiful. Are you the most beautiful? Ooh, I still like those B&Os, but you're fucking close. Um, these are also using Yaxi pads, Yaxi's TH900 pads. And these were a set that I knew I was going to be purchasing at some point because I wanted the 900s forever. But then when the 909s came out and I saw them and I'm like, oh God, an open back version of the 900s? Daddy, please, please. And then I ended up spending money on it. And uh, I actually got a deal from Fostex. I think it was like 30% off because they sent me this. And I'm like, I'm keeping them. And they're like, great. Where's your credit card? And I'm like, fuck. Because, you know, sometimes I expect them just like, just leave it with me. And no. So there was like $1,400. But I love you, baby. I love you all so good. And these are actually probably the hardest headphones, not to drive, but the hardest headphones to drive correctly. Like I have a specific... X to a TA10 little hybrid tube that with a 50s tube change into it uh, to make these like the best. These are the best on that. So they're not like, I wish these headphones were just like, oh, plug it into anything they sound great. They're not. They're a pain in the ass. And I've heard them on some amps and it's like fucking the best listening experience I've ever had. I've heard them on other amps and I'm like, fuck, why did I buy these? So I love you and people should strive to have you, but they gotta know that they're gonna have to play around with amplifiers. Luckily with my job, I do that. Oh, I almost forgot. Sennheiser 560s. I wasn't sure if I'm selling these or not. 560S, I'm sorry, 560S. Because they do remarkably strange things. Weird things, strange things. And they either are great to listen to or terrible. It's not like the other Sennheisers I talked about, like the, like the 280 Pros and the, the Neumanns and 600s, where it's like, oh, they, they assess the amp. They, they, they really just are, they are brutal towards whatever you're listening to. They just, they just, they show you the truth, the true true, and it's not always the what you want to hear. Just pointing that out. <sighs> Chewbacca, are you stuck under here? Um, Klipsch Heritage HP3s. So this set of headphones, no one bought, and because Klipsch is a speaker manufacturer, who the fuck gives a shit what the fuck they make for headphones? But they put their heart and soul into these headphones, and they had their own sound, which this, it's kind of ironic that these are sitting next to this, because what I knew from the TH900s, and I wanted from the TH909s, I got in the HP3s. They're just big, and open, and bassy, and exciting, and V-shaped, and like, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. And they work on everything, and these don't. So it's, it's, it's oh, that just needs to be buffed. I need to buff this, and to get my prof a professional in here to buff my headphone. So yeah, these are the, these dropped to like 500, 600 bucks, and I made sure everyone in my patrons chat bought all of them. Buy all of them. By the way, don't forget to check out Hi-Fi Guides. DMS today was putting together a list of new headphones to add to the wall. The ZMF Aeolus, not Aeolus, Aeolus, and this was a special set sent to me by Zach. It's a different wood and the different color, the bronze and the thing and this headband. And as far as like aggressive headphones go, these are one of them. These are like, when, a lot of people will tell me, hey, I want to get a relaxed headphone for chilling out. And I'm thinking about getting the Aeolus. And I'm like, I don't want to tell you to do that, buddy. Because these are very forward detail headphones. They sort of attack you with sound. And that's fantastic. That's fine. Because they do it fantastic and fine. I respect everything that comes out of these. These are another one for good for testing out uh, amps. Not as much as of a change like with tubes and draw, but just for like seeking out detail. Uh, followed by one of the newest additions to the whole of the wall. I've got a couple, couple new boys on here. Mackies are new. These are the Harmonic Dine Zeus. And they belong right there. And they might be the best headphone I heard in 2020. We're looking at you, Gold Planar, for the best headphone I've heard in 2021. Even though I've been, it's, it was 2020 yesterday. But you're not coming out till 2021, so you're going to be. Basically, what these do is, and a DMS has said, oh, they put a concert hall on your head. Yeah, that's pretty fucking accurate. They are the, hugely comfortable, not incredibly well built on top, but my God, you cannot fault them for that that side thing. The pads are phenomenal. 
detachable cable, they fit beautifully, and then you hear them and it's like, oh, cream your pants, cream your ears, cream your eye sockets. It's just low end and detail and imaging and soundstage. These are probably the best headphones of 2020. Um, I, I'm gonna give them that, that rep. I'm, I'm just, I'm looking around, I'm like, all right, what else came out in 2020? Oh, anything, anything, the 5XX are good. You're real fucking good. Are you Harmonic Dine Zeus? I don't know. 2020, anything new? Anything here? 2020, 400, you're not the right category. I mean, yes, no, no you, you, you know what? Yeah, you're definitely the best headphone of 2020. Harmonic Dine Zeus, hands down. I undersell things now. People yell at me for liking everything so much that when I do a review and I fucking love something, I find myself holding back because I don't want people to think I'm a shill. So that, who does that hurt more, me or you? Because yeah, I might come up as a shill if I say something way too nice. But if you don't buy it because I didn't push hard enough, then you've missed out. So I've got to make the decision if I want to just actually gush. When I do these GL2000s, it's all fucking, it's, I'm taking the gloves off. I'm going to fucking whip my dick out on camera and beat it and then wear them on the head. That's how good those are. I love you, Harmonic Dine Zeus. I'm selling your box in the yard sale. Fostex T60 RP Argon. Now I have the original T60s back here and um, I think they're one of the most interesting looking headphones because Fostex took the time to take wood, mahogany, African mahogany, and machine it out in the shape of the plastic they used on the original T50s. Why? That seems obsessive. I love it. Give it to me. And then I change this out with the um, the beautiful understated leather. You can look this up on uh, Montreal. Understated Montreal. Look that up on Instagram and you can find this person who sells leather goods. And I left the stock pads on. And these are a bit sharp. But as far as like a T50 mod, which is basically what the T60s are, it's like a detail-oriented T50 mod. So now take the detail-oriented T50 mod. Make the T60 Argons out of it. So take the Argons, which were like, oh my god, V-shaped, big, heavy, wide. Uh, and now take that and then go keep most of that and bring the detail closer. Boom. You know what? The, these two are the best headphones. Because I think I did that one in 2020 as well. These these two would have to fight it out. for the Because these sound like the Virate Clothes, which are like a $2,200, $2,500 set of ZMFs. That's for clothes back were just fucking phenomenal. I don't own them. My friend Joe borrow, let me borrow them. And these sound like those. And then these sound like something entirely different. So yeah, these are like the two best. They're right next to each other. I don't know, my brain did that. Um, ATH 80 2000X. I recently pulled these out to play games with them again because I said these are the best gaming headphones. And fuck me, that stands true. Planet Side 2, it wasn't even, which isn't even a game with great audio. Just you get so frightened of the sounds because the imaging is so accurate. There's not a lot of low end until I put these. These are uh, Mr. Speaker's Alpha Dog pads. Huge, like huge pads. Just big as fuck in a house. And they just add a little bit of low end. They give a little more space to have low end develop. And I did a detachable cable mod to these and I fucked up the drivers and replaced both drivers. So I had a $500 headphone and I had to pay for both new drivers, which is $125. And I bought pads for them. And so great, fucking great. You're new to the wall and your price went down to the correct price for a little while. Now it's back up to like over 300. And I don't think you're worth over 300, but you're just pretty as shit. These are the Philips X3s, which are better than the X2HRs. They just sound better. But price to performance wise, they're only worth maybe $50 more than the X2HRs. So if the price is greater than $50 or $75, you're probably better off buying the old model. That's what this comes down to. But you're going to stay on my wall, even though you're stupid looking and they didn't finish your leather right. Because, God, you're. F I love, I just love this design. I love it. I want to be able to pull off and test it. I want to be able to pull off and compare with it. Um, and open X. So if we're talking about uh, drop headphones, because actually, where are all the drop headphones here? Because drop is like my favorite tuning house. Like Mod House, Ryan at Mod House does the best tuning for the Argons. But if you're talking about consistently tuning things to make them better than the original manufacturer, 5.8X 
mass drop Sennheisers. We've got 5XX hi fi mins. Uh, we've got these, which are the Aeon 2 Lite or like the Aeon 1. I think these sound actually a little bit more personable. Like when Drop tunes a headphone, they drop it, they drop tune it to actually be enjoyable. And I don't know, that seems like a novel fucking idea. Maybe every company should tune headphones occasionally to be enjoyable by everybody. So it's like those, I just find at least 90% as good as the Aeon 2s, but also more fun to listen to and comfortable as fuck. Like look at the shape of that. How could it not be comfortable as fuck? <laughs> There's a thing stuck in it. It's not gonna come out and get a vacuum cleaner. So yeah, these will say, well, I actually have a whole bag of pads that Dakoni sent me to change out for this, but drop somehow neglected to take the glue off of it because it's just they're glued on pads, so it's a pain in the ass. You know what? Civica Phoenix came out in 2020 as well. Holy fuck. We've got Civica Phoenix, Zeus, and T60 Yargons. We've got a lot of winners here, boys and girls, from, from like last year. These are all headphones that have blown me away. The Civica Phoenix comfort style that does not look like a fucking 250 fifty dollar headphone that looks like a seven eight hundred dollar headphone maybe a little bit smaller than you would expect from that but sendy iva again uh reminiscent headbands same company at civga just rebranded it to do to do their thing and they're like a dark like dms hates these i love them dms and i love the zeus so I think that this sort of has like the Zeus in mind, but it's not as competent at it. It's just like, okay, we're just gonna do some relaxed, wide, creamy sound. Everything's creamy. The, the detail is slightly, just slightly, they put, the, they put the detail on the side just for soundstage and imaging. And it's like, oh God, yes. I've tested so many fucking things with the goddamn uh, Civica Phoenix that these were the last headphone I reviewed in my old apartment. That's important. So yes, Civica Phoenix belong on this fucking wall. However, right next to it is another insanely new boy on the block is the Emotiva uh, GR1, GR Research 1. And this is based <clears throat> on, I would assume, similar design patterns as the Civica Phoenix because they come in the same case. They have the same wire. Um, they both come, they both have similar properties as far as how the driver is described. But these do detail better than these. These are like the serious version of the Civica Phoenix. Because they're just more, more going on. They do the more controllable. These are just sort of like, I feel like they open the back of this and it's sort of like let it wild. And I'm okay with that because I have a fucking selection of headphones. And if something's a little bit crazier, I'm down. And these were a little bit more tightened up and accurate. Same sort of level of accuracy and things. Super easy to drive, both of these. But that one's a little more serious. So I think I've now covered the whole wall. Have I missed anything here? Five six has got Neumann's GL2. GL2 just, just keep saying to yourself, GL2000. Yes, by the way, this is the Ico um, ear IEM thing with the adapters on it to give it three and a half millimeter because this is the double magnet version, which is easier to drive. So I can actually power that with a Bluetooth thingy. Uh, if you're interested in these racks, by the way, that I've built, um, whoa, I have an entire series of videos coming up on the unboxing channel that goes over these. I didn't pick a wallpaper. There's probably a wallpaper on there that's not ready to go yet. So I've got these two racks are being built. This is the tube rack. This is the solid state rack with the laptop on it, with the monitor on mounted. So this is going to be like, these are going to be my two Vate Mercury that are going to flank the desk. I've got this, uh, what light, your Godox? Godox light that helps with the the ambience. Thousand dollars to add like a little bit of light, just a little bit, just, just a sort of like, hmm. So yeah, those are getting done. This wall is done. I'm gonna finish up possibly the ceiling, possibly do um, uh, track lighting here instead of this cluster fuck of fuck clusters that's going on right there. Yeah, I think we're good. I don't think we have to talk about much else. Jeremy, what do you think? No, good, 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 good. Speakers? Yeah. Hopefully I don't have to do another one of these before the end of the year. I mean, who knows what's going to happen. 2021 could be the greatest year of all time. In the history of man. We're going to invent the flying car. 
We are going to set foot on the moon of Saturn. It's going to be great. Um, cure all diseases is way up there on my list of things I want to see happen in 2021. And uh, hopefully we'll get some decent headphones and speakers and things that I could... Because th the, the hardest part now is now that everything perfectly fits on this wall is I don't fucking want to add anything else. So it's going to be a very difficult time deciding what has to go if anything has to go. So don't suck. Don't suck, 2021. I'm t mm, warning you. And try to try to give me things that makes me go, oh, you know what, I should sell that. M40Xs are done. I got this new thing. It's going to be so much better. Boom, on the wall. Yeah, and uh, I think that's it for my basement. I'm Zeos Pantera. Uh, if you like this channel, I got to give the standard bumper of support me on Patreon or Subscribestar. See reviews early. I don't think this is going out to them early because this is sort of just like a general overview thing. But uh, reviews, sound demos... Uh, any sort of coupon codes I get hold of from companies, all go to my patrons and subscribe star subscribers. They usually get to see reviews between a week and two weeks early. So when things are out of stock, when you get it publicly, that's their fault. Um, the five dollar tier also puts you in the participation of the yard sale, which I will ship things uh, content to the United States free and one third shipping international until COVID is not a thing. Then it's back to fifty percent. Uh, and yeah, that's a bunch of stuff going on there. And if you'd like to ask me questions, you can join the $10 Telegram or Patreon or subscribe to our chat, which uh, puts you in a behind the scenes private Telegram chat with me and a bunch of other people. And they'll all answer your questions along with me. Or you could uh, PM me if you're a high enough tier and we'll just, you could talk in private if you have something you don't want to mention in the group. That's fine. There's also now, if you are a subscriber for long enough or I guess short enough, but for the most amount of money, you can join a lifetime channel, which you don't get kicked out of. The $10 tier, you stop paying $10, you get kicked out every three months, it refreshes. There is a lifetime subscription tier that if you've if you've donated enough to the channel, you're in it. You're in it. My brother's been a subscriber of mine for years. C does. And he's just in it. He just, I'm like, why the hell are you paying for my channel? You're my little brother. Stop it. But he's in the uh, the lifetime channel now. So yeah. We've pretty much covered um, everything. In fact, you know what's going to be suck? I'm not going to be able to fit all of these links on the video description. I'm going to have to link you guys to a post on Hi-Fi Guides. I'm pretty sure. That makes the most sense because then I can promote Hi-Fi Guides in the comments. See, look, I'm smart. Smart. I'll link a couple things, but then Hi-Fi Guides for the actual detailed. And this way people can go there and comment. If you don't know what Hi-Fi Guides is, it's a site for picking out headphones and speakers and amps and DACs and subwoofers. Or it's a forum. The forum is super busy, like 25,000 consecutive users on all the time, which is pretty fucking impressive. But I guess everyone's stuck home 2020 things. So yeah, thank you for stopping by for this long-ass video. I'm going to go upstairs and play uh, BeamNG Drive with my friends on multiplayer. Because that's what 2020 is all about. 2021. Oh shit, that's what 2021 is all about. I think 2021 will be all right. I hope I don't have to come back here and comment. I'm, not, I'm hoping that the timestamp that says, you know, you know, 41 minutes in, 2021 is going to be all right. Fuck you, Zeos. You didn't know the blah, blah, blah. I don't want to see that. No. No. Stop it. Anyway, we're good. I'm good. You're good. We're good. Links to phone blocks too, Zeos. You got to link to all these phone blocks that you use and, and yoga mats. I've been here the entire cycle of a of a thing. So I'm done. Thank you. Peace out. See you in 2021 for Z Reviews and the Cooking Consortium and the Unboxing Channel.